Who needs Apple Maps when you can have Google Maps? In this video, I'm going to show you how to add Google Maps also for iOS in your .NET MAUI application. Now, before I go and show you how to add that Google Map to your iOS.NET MAUI application, um, there is one good thing that's good to know about this plugin. It supports iOS and Android. So .NET MAUI, uh, of course, also supports Windows, Mac OS, Tizen, um, but this plugin supports Android and iOS. Uh, actually, while talking about this, I realized that um, you might be able to pull it off on Mac OS because Mac OS uses Mac Catalyst, which basically allows you to run your iOS applications on a Mac. So maybe that works as well. Try it out, let me know in the comments or maybe I'll try it out myself right after this. Um, but that's good to know. Other than that, this plugin is pretty much amazing. It's called Maui.Google Maps. Um, I'll show you that in a little bit. And it has all kinds of features that are not in the um, .NET Maui Maps package. So there is a lot going on here. And actually, I think we should just switch over to Visual Studio and I will just show you. So here we're in Visual Studio 2022. I just created a file new .NET Maui project. You can see that on the left and it's already running on the iOS simulator, which you can see on the right. So um, because, you know, Google Maps on Android, that's kind of like standard, right? So I want to show you this on iOS. And I've linked Visual Studio to my Mac build host that's on my network. Um, and I uh, can mirror my iOS screen here. So it's actually running through a Mac and you can see it right here. So um, actually, I'm going to stop running it now for a little bit because the first thing that you want to do is install the NuGet package. So go over to your solution explorer, right click on the project, and then you go uh, uh, to manage NuGet packages. And we're going to look for, it's actually called onion.maui.googlemaps. And if you search for that, then you will find it here, Onion Maui Google Maps. Um, 5.0.0 is the actual version at the time of recording. So let's just install that and it will install it for iOS and Android. I didn't remove all the other targets here. You want to accept all these licenses after you've read them, obviously. And um, then it will install this package on your project. So. The other thing, uh, we still need to initialize this a little bit. Uh, so this is installed now. And as is kind of like um, with a lot of .NET MAUI plugins, you need to go to your MAUI program and bootstrap this plugin for a little bit. So let's go back to our solution explorer again. Now open the MAUI program.cs. Um, here we go. And what do we want to do for this builder is we want to add some stuff here. And we want to make a difference between Android and iOS because the way that you have to specify the API key for Google Maps is a little bit different between them. Um, so what the first thing that you want to do is um, basically go here and say using um, probably also onion. Is it onion? No. Is it Maui dot Google Maps? There we are. And then you probably want to go here to the builder dot use uh, Google Maps. Here we go. Oh, it's actually in Google Maps hosting. All right. So it helps me with that. Thank you, Visual Studio. And you can already see it has red squigglies because it doesn't even have this for like Windows and, and, and Mac Catalyst probably, but it does have it for iOS. But for iOS, we need to specify a string here. Um, and But when I switch the target here to um, Android, you will see that it doesn't have this overload with this string, right? So now there's weird things going on, but don't worry, I will help you out here. Um, so let's get this if dev in here, if Android, we want to uh, do it without this string right here. And then else if, l if in this syntax, iOS, we want to have that other one and we need to do an end if, right? So we need to do this. And then I can say here, use Google Maps, but now I need the other one with the strings right here. And I think that now everything, oops, this end if is, not correct. And if there we are, um, and now everything is happy, right? So I'm on Android, this is happy. When I go to iOS, this one is happy too. So well, except for the actual API key, right? So let's uh, actually talk about that for a little bit. So there is one thing that is good to know about the API key. Um, ask me how I know, um, because it didn't work. I couldn't get the Google map this plugin to work on iOS. And I couldn't figure out why turns out on Google, when you work with these API keys that you have to enable certain API. So you have um, API for Google Maps on Android, and you have an API for Google Maps on iOS. Um, so that is a thing that you need to enable for this API key. I had to specifically enable the SDK or whatever it's called for iOS as well before it suddenly started working. So uh, I will show you that in very shortly in a little bit. I just wanted to put this pro tip in here so that you don't spend a lot of time um, like I did. 
basically. So here you can see the actual portal for the Google APIs. Um, I have this Maps for JavaScript API even enabled. Um, I'm not gonna walk you through this in great detail. I'm sure you can figure this out yourself. But the important thing here is whenever you have these APIs, you have these enabled APIs right here. And I only had this Maps SDK for Android. And I here down in the list, you can see more APIs. Um, so pretend that this Maps SDK for iOS is not here in the top list, but here in the bottom list and, and I click it, um, then you would be brought to to a page and you really have to um, do this button enable and only then the API key will also be enabled for that SDK. So that's what I needed to do for iOS as well. Um, just for you so you don't spend a lot of time on this. Okay, so let's continue here. Um, and actually I'm gonna pull this uh, API key from somewhere where I had it already. So let me just copy this real quick. Um, of course, this also means that you can have two separate API keys for iOS and Android if that's what you want, uh, but I'm just gonna use the same one right now. And by the time that you're watching this video, I've thrown this one away, so don't bother uh, trying this one at home. So this is our setup for iOS mostly. There's one other thing that we need to do, so go over to our Solution Explorer, the Platforms folder, then iOS, um, and the Info P list. I'm going to right-click and do Open With the XML Text Editor because um, that's a little bit easier to copy and paste something in here and I'm going to paste this key and a string, um, which has to do with um, the location in use, because whenever I say, hey, I want to see the user location on the map, I have to request the permissions to actually do that, right? Um, and this string will uh, give the user like, hey, the app needs location to display on maps. You probably want to put some reason in here so that the user knows, hey, this is okay, this application, uh, I can trust them with my location. So that's for iOS. Um, for Android, I'm not gonna run it on Android, but just to be complete here, let's go to our solution explorer and this time to the Android folder, the Android manifest. Um, and I want to do a couple of things. So here is the application node. Let's see if we can find the end of it. Here we are. And you want to expand on this. And then here I want to paste in this little metadata node, um, which also specify the uh, API key right here. So this is the same one. And um, we are going to specify that with blah, 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 API key. And then you also want to here put the permissions for um, the location. So uses course location, uses find location, so that that is requested through the map as well, and we should be good to go. So that's for Android. Again, I'm not going to actually run it, so um, I'm going to forget about that, but we have everything in place to actually start implementing our map. How exciting is that? So let's go over to our main page of XAML and um, start consuming that map. So the first thing, as with, again, a lot of plugins, you want to add this XML namespace, and in this case, I'm gonna call it maps, just, just call it like that. And I'm going to search here with IntelliSense for maps as well. And if you want to um, use the Maui.Google maps, that's the one that has all the bits that you are going to use here in, in this XAML. And I'm going to throw out all of this scroll view stuff. We don't need any of that. So let's just do this. And I can now start typing here maps map, right? We have this map right here. And there's a couple of things. Well, there's a lot of things that you can actually do with this. So we have like all these pins, right? We have events, pin clicked, drag. So you can drag the pins, apparently. Uh, you can set the selected pin or get the selected pin. Um, you can set um, my location enabled or my location button clicked. So you can also influence like the button behavior and that kind of stuff. Um, now there is one good thing to know. You have a lot of these enabled things. Has rotation enabled, scroll, zoom. Um, but a lot of this is obsolete. You can still do it, but you need to do it a little bit different. So if we do this has rotation enabled and set a value, it will also tell you like, hey, you shouldn't be using this. Please use the map UI settings, rotate gestures enabled. Um, I couldn't really find a way to set these settings in XAML, which is kind of weird because everything that you can do in C Sharp, you should be able to do in XAML. So there's probably a way, I just haven't figured it out yet. Um, but what you can do is of course, reference this uh, with an X name right here. And I'm gonna call this my map and now from code, what you can do is here, uh, ooh, I have to remove all this code, else the build's not going to work here because I removed all those visual elements, right? Um, and I can say here my map dot UI settings dot 
And here we have like the, the compass enabled indoor level picker. So whenever you go like the indoor Google Maps, uh, you can pick the level that you're on. Uh, the maps toolbar, my location button, you can en enable and disable all these UI things that can show on your map, right? Um, so I'm not going to do any of these right now. I just want to show you the basics. Um, so I'm going to go to my main page again. And what you can set is also uh, like the initial camera update. So that's kind of like the initial camera where you're going to be. So so initial camera update and there is a special kind of syntax I'm not sure if it's standardized or just for this plugin um, but you can um, um, come up with a couple of things here so the first things let me ju actually just copy and paste it from here is the coordinates so we have the coordinates this is a latitude and longitude right then we have another comma which is um, I don't know actually what is this one is. It's not really specified. Um, <laughs> oh, it's the zoom. It's a zoom. It's a zoom. So that's the zoom level. I think the zoom level for Google Maps is like between, I don't know, 1 and 14, something like that. Um, so that's the zoom level. Um, then this is the rotation. So the rotation of the map for the compass. And then you have the tilt, right? So where, if you're like um, looking at it to the horizon or kind of like from above. Um, so you can specify all of this with this kind of special syntax. I'll, I'll, I'm reading this here actually from a little bit of a comment that is outdated. Um, so this is not the um, location is Netherlands and the zoom is five, right? So I'll leave that in. Uh, all the code has a accompanying GitHub repository that will be linked down below. So make sure that you check that one. And this comment will be in there so that you know um, what this is exactly. Of course, again, this can also be set from C-sharp code if that's what you want. But if you want to do things from XAML, this is a nice way to do it. Um, now, let's just add a couple of more things. Um, I want to actually show this up nicely. So let's do vertical options, fill and expand so that it fills up the whole thing here. And what I want to do is the my location enabled um, is true so that it actually shows my location. So that's kind of like your basic use case, right? And let's just run this on the iPhone. So it's going to launch here. It's going to run here on the right on the iOS simulator. And we're going to see this application. It should show me a full map, but um, not really like the Don and Maui map where you would see Apple Maps, you will now get the actual Google Maps and um, with all the options that we've set here. All right, the application is coming up. The simulator has been started to launch the app. There we go. Um, and are we actually going to see the Google Map? Hang on for the next episode. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not that kind of clickbait, cliffhanger title. Um, I'm just trying to fill the time until the application launches here. So here we are, the Google um, um, map comes up. It asks me for my permission. Um, if I want to allow it once, yes, do allow once. I'm just gonna get myself out of the way here. Allow once, so it's actually going to get my location. Um, and you can see here, this is the lat long that I said with the zoom level, which is um, pretty high up as you can see right here. Um, but if you zoom in, you can see like this is just a Google map stuff, right? You can see the little compass here, which is apparently default. You can zoom out and zoom in by, by actually pinching. Um, I can uh, go to, to some other stuff because my location is actually simulated, of course, because I'm, I'm running the simulator right here. So my location, I think is somewhere in the US here. Um, probably somewhere here in the, the, the Apple campus. I don't know, something around here. I don't know why it's there. Um, so you have all this stuff. And that is how easy it is to get started with this plugin. Now, this is a very basic example, and I didn't want to, you know, make the video any longer by doing all kinds of advanced stuff. If you want to know more advanced about the options right here, let me know down in the comments and I can go into it a little bit more. But just to show you what else is there, um, there is a sample app in the repository for this plugin. Again, the links can be all found down below. Um, and let me just launch that app right here because it has a sample app with a lot of the options that this plugin can actually do. So here we have that basic map, right? Um, actually, let, you know, let's just click on it. So I can set the map type, which is street, or I can put it to satellite, or you can uh, change it to hybrid. Um, again, I'm a little bit in the way here. Um, you can set it to terrain. So you have all this stuff. Um, you can do the UI settings here. So is the scroll gesture enabled? So when I go over it now, nothing happens, right? And if I enable it again, then I can suddenly scroll. Um, can you zoom? Can you do? Can you do all these things? Um, is traffic enabled, right? So you can see that and then you can see if it's, it's 
apparently busy right here. Um, I don't know where we are actually. Um, so you have all these things, but there is also pins, right? The pins that I already mentioned. So you can add a pin to Tokyo. So let's go to Tokyo, add this pin. You can see you can actually still even um, 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 rotate that a little bit. I can go to New York. Oh, New York is not added. Well, let's add a pin to New York and I can select it programmatically so that this little tooltip pops up. Um, again, I can, I can move around with this. I can clear the selection. Um, so there is all this kind of cool stuff that's in here. One thing that I really wanted to point out is that you can also do the custom tiles. So this is just the regular tiles, but you can also do open railway map. I don't even know what that is, but it apparently has something to do with all the railway in the world. You can also use open street map, so uh, load the tiles from open street map and get that kind of like um, 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 look and feel in here. You can even load your own images. Uh, you can do that synchronously or asynchronously. So you have all this stuff that you can work with. This video is already longer than I wanted to make actually be just because there is so much good stuff that is in here to show you. Um, I can't say it enough. If there's one thing that I want you, uh, that you want me to dive into, let me know down in the comments and also for all your other questions and um, things that you might want to know inside or outside of this topic, I'm happy to help you with um, um, anything that can make your .NET Maui or .NET journey easier. Thank you again for watching one of my videos. Please click that like button so that everyone can learn about the Maui Google Maps plugin that you've just seen and we will spread the love. I would very much appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and before you go maybe check out this playlist with more dinet maui videos and this playlist with more amazing plugins that you can also use with dinet maui see you for the next one